CataractCoach.com, IOL Design Differences. We've got many great IOL choices available today, and it's up to you to know the difference. So there's a patient with a routine cataract surgery. The incision's been made on a steep axis, and we're going to deliver this single piece acrylic lens into the capsule bag. Looks like a nice capsule rexus. This is a hydrophobic acrylic lens, and we'll open it up in the capsule bag. And you'll look at this lens and say, hey, that looks beautiful. I can tell what the design is. So this is a Technus ZC Boo lens or ZC B00. And it's a high quality lens here. As it unfolds in the eye, you can see that's the haptic design without the bulbous ends. But what's interesting here is the optic design. So while the overall edge to edge of the optic diameter is six millimeters, the focusing part of the optics is actually a bit less in this eye. And that has to do with the refractive index of this lens. You know, we all balance things in the lens design. There is no perfect IOL. You have to accept that. And so different lenses have different benefits and some potential downsides. And it's up to you to choose the lens that you think best suits the patient. So this lens is noted to have great chromatic aberration ability with not causing too much distortion there. It has a significant degree of negative spherical collaboration in an attempt to bounce off the cornea. It has a little bit of a lower refractive index than some other acrylic lenses. And that's the reason why the IOL ends up becoming a little thicker. So at most powers, like in this case, that's a 23 diopter lens, the optic has been formed with this blank zone around the focusing part. So if you look carefully, it's only about a five maybe 5.2 millimeter optic. And then the overall diameter is six millimeters, but it's with that zone that doesn't necessarily focus light. So refractive index here is 1.47. The Abbey number, which indicates the degree of chromatic aberration is excellent at 55. And this lens is also noted not to have any long-term glistenings. So it performs quite well in the eye. So again, about a five millimeter focusing zone at this dioptric power. That's okay for this patient because this patient's normal scotopic pupil size is about four millimeters. And now we've got another case. So here's a nice capsule rexus. We're going to deliver the eye well in the capsule bag. Here comes the lens. It looks like a single piece acrylic lens also. Now look carefully. It's not quite the same design as the first lens. So this lens is the Alcon hydrophobic acrylic lens, the Acrosoft lens, and this is the SA60WF. So it does not have a yellow tint. It has the same clarity as the uh, other lens we showed you. But look carefully, the haptic has a little bulbous tip there, and the overall optic diameter is six millimeters, and that's fully focusing. So the focusing ability is six millimeters edge to edge. Like the previous patient, this is also um, a patient who wants a monofocal lens with a distance acuity goal. So removing viscoelastic here. Now this lens material has a little higher refractive index. It's also slightly tacky, meaning it wants to slightly stick to the posterior capsule, which can be a very good thing for centration of the lens or even dialing in the toric lens to an appropriate axis. And in fact, in the initial trials of both toric lenses, when they first came out, the first generation lenses, you notice that this had among the very best in terms of rotational stability. And part of that is due be that the material is slightly tacky. So that lens is centered up very nicely. You can see good capsule rexus overlap on top of it. Now this lens is, has been associated with some sort of glistening. And there's a debate on the glistening, whether or not it has an effect on the visual outcome for the patients. And studies have gone either way. This patient has a very large pupil. And so as a result, we want the biggest optic that's focusing all the way out to the edge. That's an important thing in this situation. So we see this lens has a refractive index of 1.55, a little bit higher. Abbey number is 37, so pretty good, but not quite as high as the previous lens that we showed you. And they're centered up in the eye. And again, that's a beautiful centration with Rex's. Um, now it's six millimeter optic and the whole six millimeters is focusing. So for this patient who has a larger nighttime pupil size, this lens is probably gonna be a better outcome. 
So if you compare the two IOLs side by side, they look very different. Although for most things, their outcomes give the same visual results. Here we can see there's the outside uh, lines showing that both are magnified the same degree to show that six millimeter optic being the same. But you see on the left, that lens does have that non-focusing zone, which is about uh, a half millimeter all the way around. So five millimeter effective optic on the left and on the right is six millimeter optic. So for you as a surgeon, try all different lenses and know them all. It's best to have many, many tools in your toolbox, even if you have a few favorites that you prefer to use most of the time. So don't just believe everything the manufacturers tell you. Use them yourselves, do your own research, and give every lens an opportunity or a spot for your toolbox. And hey, check out cataractcoach.com, our free teaching website, a thousand videos, so much more than you'll find here on YouTube, all organized. You can submit your video, sign up for a free daily email. You can search by categories or keywords. It is a tremendous knowledge base, and you would definitely benefit from it.